Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about hand target or touch. Um, and what target is, um, it's really just teaching the dog to put his or her nose or paw on an object or as an orientation device. And what I mean by that is when I teach a dog touch, I want their nose to touch my two fingers out like this. Some trainers will teach it with an open hand and that's not wrong um, because it's just giving the dog a place to go. However, I find in some of my classes that when students go to do stay and they tell the dog to stay and it jumps up and bumps its nose to the hand, that becomes a little confusing for some dogs, not all. Um, but I also work with some fearful dogs and small dogs and having a smaller target is a little less scary for them and this is such a clear signal. So if you've ever taken sign language, it's a letter H. Um, or if you've read other instructors, they can also do an open hand. So whatever works for you, dogs are pretty good at figuring out what it is that we want. They're really good at watching our body language and know what our intentions are a lot of the times. So they can easily tell the difference between touch and like touch and stay. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna do this. Um, so what can I use touch for? Well, I can use it to get my dog to come. Captain, touch, touch. I can get him to come up, boop. Um, I can get him to come to me. I can use it for trick work. In um, For nervous dogs, instead of having somebody come up to a dog and go, I love dogs, and like grab them by the face and pat them, I can invite the dog over to say hi. This can become a secret handshake for fearful dogs that if they choose to come over to say hi, great. Um, and if they choose not to, that's also fine. Um, so it's, it's a nice way for me to figure out where I can start with a dog. Um, I don't ever wanna ask a dog to touch and make them feel like they're forced to come over. For most dogs, if you ask for a touch, they'll happily come over and touch your hand. But in those cases where the dog is maybe so shy or so fearful around people, um, if you ask them to do this, I call this the Santa effect, they might come over to get a treat and then they get the treat, but now they're in too close. Just like those little kids who sit on Santa's lap. Um, and when you've seen those videos and those pictures of the kids crying, it's because they really want to get the toy, they really want to tell Santa what they want, but they're afraid of him. Whether he smells like rum and old mall, I don't know. Um, maybe they just don't like strangers. But the thing is, like, the kid is too close um, and they're uncomfortable, but it's all to get a reward. Um, it's all to get something. It's conditional. So I don't want touch to become conditional for fearful dogs. If you touch my hand, I'm going to give you something. I would much rather use this as a diagnostic to see if a dog is comfortable. And if not, I will continue giving that dog space until they feel comfortable to come into mine. Um, so here's how we're going to try teaching touch. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to change how this looks. And then I'm going to show you how to go through the stages of touch and some uses that you can um, start to employ today using hand target. All right, so to start touch, what I'm gonna do, I've got my treat here, it's in my pocket, I got extra treats here. I would just kind of rub a little bit on your fingers and then invite the dog, bonk, yes, and treat from the other side. Or click, yes, yes. And most dogs are curious and they'll come over and check. Now I can start to move, Oof. I like to in, uh, picture an invisible shoe box size rectangle around their head and have them kind of bonk, cap. Yes, good job. You notice how I'm not using the word touch yet. Um, if I were working with a new dog, Captain's been doing this for ages. Yes, so I would try to make sure that the dog understands what I want before I go ahead and give it a word. Yes, if I can bet that this dog will do it, um, if I can bet my mortgage that he's going to do the behavior, then I will call it touch just before I present my hand. Captain, touch, yes. Touch, yes. Now I can see if I can get him to take a step. Touch, yes. Touch, yes. Other uses of touch, you've seen a lot of my other videos before. I can't believe I've, I totally missed touch um, in the first week of this because it's such a foundational skill. But really what touch is, like I said, an orientation device, I can use it to teach spin. Yeah. So he's going to follow my hand instead of a treat. I can teach through, wait, sit, come through, nope, try again, uh oh, sit, come through, yes, 
good job. I can use it for loose leash walking. If I had a leash on him, cap, sit, sit. Oh, he is, he's in a mood. Hold on one second. And I can do it for recall. Sit, stay. So touch has a myriad of uses, um, whether it's in basic manners, in more advanced stuff, in agility, you use a lot of target to guide a dog through uh, a tunnel or over a jump, um, through a hoop, onto a platform. Um, you can use touch in so many ways. So I guarantee that you're going to discover new ways to use it that I haven't covered here. Um, but touch is such a foundational skill and it's so useful in almost everything that you do. So give it a shot, try it, and let me know how it goes with you today and see if you can um, maybe uh, tell me in the comments how many, um, how many ways that you use touch every day or new ways that you can think of using touch or target um, with just your hand. You can also do foot target, you could do um, wall targets, you can teach them to touch it in this, like I have like um, teaching a dog to touch um, objects like a book or a nail clipper um, so you can teach you can transfer the idea of touch or target to other things um, but if you have, want other ideas on using touch or target you can also google hand target dog um, or target training dogs things like that so good luck and I'll talk to you guys next week can you do another